This is the third and final YouTube of a series of three covering the new law that's going to go into effect in Washington State on June the 7th of 2012 titled the Fair Tenant Screening Act and it's Senate Bill 6315. Hi, my name is Rebecca Neer and I'm the CEO of Orca Information Inc. And this is our mascot, Joey. He makes sure that everyone at the office is right on it, getting those reports back to our clients. We've been doing background checks nationwide for landlords and property managers for many years, all across this nation. And for employers and HR departments, which is, of course, employment screening. This third YouTube is going to focus on the section of the new law, which is the second document that is required for all landlords and property managers to give to applicants under certain circumstances, which is adverse action, when a landlord takes adverse action against an applicant. Okay, here's the scenario. An applicant comes in and applies for your unit. You get that screening report back and you, re you review that screening report. There's something on that report that causes you to deny that applicant. That is adverse action. In fact, the law, the wording in the law is thus. If a landlord takes adverse action, the landlord shall provide a written notice of, of the adverse action to the applicant that states the reason for the adverse action. Now some of you are familiar with that term adverse action and for others it's not quite so familiar. So what is adverse action? I've already explained one and that is straight denial of an applicant. A second adverse action meaning anything that negatively affects the applicant's opportunity to rent from the landlord based on the information that comes back on that tenant screening report. So another adverse action may be you require a cosigner or you may say I will rent to you but I need to increase the deposit. Those three things, a denial, an increased deposit, a cosigner, are considered adverse action. So of course in the event of those actions taken against an applicant, you would want to give them what is called an adverse action letter, also titled a consumer rights letter. In that consumer rights are several required paragraphs of information. Number one, you will need to list or mark off. I've already listed the different, the possibilities of adverse action. In other words, the information came back on the background check report and it's the credit information that caused you to turn an applicant down or require a cosigner or increase the deposit. So you would mark off on this section of the adverse action letter, the consumer rights letter, that it was information con contained in a consumer credit report. Just mark it off. And that document would be given to the applicants. Or let's say another, uh, another choice would be information received on a criminal report. You would check that part off. Or if it was more than one, you'd check all those off. So that's the reason for the adverse action. Now the next section of this adverse action letter is if you're going to be using a score to make a decision, which most landlords do not use a score, but if for some reason you're going to include a score, you would need to mark off the appropriate boxes for what it was within that score that caused you to ha take, excuse me, take adverse action against those applicants. The other information that's required is the name and the address of the background check company that did the work, such as Orca Information Inc our mailing address, our phone number, easy to contact us if they want to get a copy of the report. That's why they call it a consumer rights letter as well. Because all consumers have a right to access the background information that was pulled on them that you reviewed. This is their confidential information. They are allowed to have a copy of it. In fact, they're encouraged to have a copy of it, but they need to jump through the, the correct hoops or follow 
certain protocols to get a copy of that information, such as they need to contact TransUnion for a copy of that credit report. They need to contact ORCA information for the, uh, the part of the screening report that we typed up and sent to you. That information will be on this adverse action letter. Now the last and final thing that will be on this adverse action letter is a summary of your rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. In other words, they have the right to check out this background check that you reviewed, and if there's mistakes on it, to get those mistakes straightened out. Or if there was a mistake by the tenant screening company or the credit, uh, the credit bureau, they have the right to contact those companies and make sure that everything is corrected on that background check. So it's a summary of their rights. Now at ORCA, we have been assisting our clients in developing tenant selection policies for years and making available the adverse action letter. And we want to make available this letter to you. So on the bottom of your screen of this YouTube, click on that link and you're going to be able to access the form that we covered in the second YouTube as well as this third YouTube covering the adverse action of the consumer rights letter. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, please contact us at ORCA. We're at 1-800-341-0022, and our web address is www.orcainformation.com. Thank you.